How did the Bible become the Bible? How did Jewish histories and prophetical writings get handed down through the ages and leather bound into a book that we receive as the authoritative word of God? I'm Adam, and this is After the Fact. This is part of an ongoing series on how the canon was constructed. When we look at the Old Testament, we often categorize it into five distinct sections. The Pentateuch, the historical books, the poetical writings, the writings of the major prophets, and the minor prophets. However, for most of this book's history, certainly during the time of Jesus, uh, the scriptures were viewed in three categories. The Torah, the books of Moses, the Nevim, the writings of the prophets, and the Ketuvim, the other writings. Uh, we've examined the Torah previously. Today, we're going to take some time and examine the Nevim, the writings of the prophets. Now, this category includes some books that you would not expect. Uh, the Nevim consists of the books of Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the Book of the Twelve, or the Twelve Minor Prophets as we view them today. Uh, it's fascinating to see just what books are included in this category, and it's important to remember that as we read what we would think of as historical books, we aren't just reading about our past, but we're also reading with a lens to interpret our present and, and find these books final fulfillment in Jesus. And so as we read the book of Joshua, we read it prophetically. And so as we read about Israel's uh, conquering of the land and through the power of their God, as we read about their failure to drive out the Canaanites within and without their, their borders, as we look at Joshua and his great leader, we can look at our own lives. We can ask ourselves the question, in, in what ways is God seeking to conquer our sin? In, in what ways are we meant to take conquest into our world? In what ways do we fail to drive out sin in our hearts and in our world? And how can we see Jesus as the better Joshua, the one who leads us into full victory and finishes what was only started? As we reflect on the book of Judges, we see a constant, continuous refrain. There was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And so as we read these stories of uh, terrible decay and just awful human behavior, we examine them not just as uh, something that happened in the past, but as a lens to view our present. In what way do we neglect leadership? In what way do we neglect spiritual leadership? In what way do we try to be our own kings and do what's right in our own eyes? And how do we see that result in decay and depravity within our world? As we read the story of Samuel and, and, and Saul and David, we find the fulfillment of the king that we've been hoping for, not in a political figure, but in Jesus himself, the son of David, who will have mercy on the whole world. We read the book of the kings and, and we see just cycles of evil kings who corrupt the nation and good kings who bring blessings to their nation. And again, we seek and, and we long for the true king, Jesus, who will sit on the throne, not just of Israel, but of the whole universe and govern with justice and righteousness. These are prophetic books. They remind us to look at our world and they remind us to look forward to Christ who's, who's come and is yet to come. The, the books of the, the, the Nevim, the prophets, also include a, what we consider more traditional prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, the minor prophets. Uh, as we see these men again and again call out sin within their own nation, we're reminded to look at our own lives, to look at our own families, our churches, our nation, and say, what sins have we involved ourselves in? In what ways have we participated in uh, terrible injustices? In what ways have we participated in, in, in terrible evil within our society? And how can we, as followers of Jesus, as prophets in our own day, call out the sin of our culture, call out the sin of our world, and point to uh, the Christ who saves us from sin? Uh, we're reminded of the prophecies of Isaiah as, as he looks forward to this coming Messiah, a servant who will suffer on behalf of Israel and, and usher in a new kingdom. Jeremiah reminds us of the suffering that God's people face in their world, and yet the hope that God gives as he has a plan to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. Uh, Ezekiel reminds us of the incredible way that God works in our world. H his ways are inscrutable and unfathomable. I, Ezekiel reminds us that there's a day coming when God will write his law, not in a book, but on the hearts of mankind. And that day is fulfilled in Jesus as we find the law of God written in the human heart. And as, as we have the spirit with us discerning right and wrong. 
And then the book of the 12 uh, looks at the cycles of evil that Israel finds themselves in and, and the continual call to repentance and the continual promise of the Messiah. And as we read the book of the 12, the, the minor prophets weren't meant to be studied separately, but together as one unit. And as we read those books, we see ourselves in cycles of sin and decay and desperation, and yet always hopeful for our Messiah, our Christ, our King, to break us out of our cycles of sin, our cycles of despair, our cycles of rebellion, and usher us into the fullness of his kingdom that is an everlasting kingdom. So we read these books not just as stories of history, not just as predictions that have already been fulfilled, but we let them truly be prophetic for our lives. We allow God's word to, to read us. Hebrews tells us that it's sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating soul and spirit, joint and marrow, judging the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And so as you read the prophets, let them judge you and let them point out your inadequacies. Let them point out your failures and take joy in that bruising, in that scourging, because we have the balm of Gilead. We have Christ himself revealed within these books and he binds up our wounds. A bruised reed he won't break, a smoldering wick he won't quench. And so we find not only condemnation of our sin, but hope of a savior. Read and savor the prophetical writings.